welcome you all here to any time for the health fair. Um, my name is Steve Vikander. Um, I got a little bit of a story to tell you uh, about why I'm here, why I come here, and why I am now on a road to health recovery. Um, I started this. I started my journey about two and a half years ago with a deep, soul-searching talk for myself uh, and my higher power. And I had to be completely honest with myself uh, about the things that I'd done, the things that had let me down this uh, treacherous path of existence that I was on. Um, it was there so very deep in the bowels of my own misery that I saw peace and I found peace. And uh, once I faced that, I realized that I did want to actually live. And uh, even though thoughts of ending it and, and suicide had been running around in my brain for years, um, I knew there was an immediate course was, uh, you know, the immediate course that I had to take was still unknown to me, but I knew that I could do it and, and uh, the intent and the purpose were actually there now. So I want to do, give you a little quick rundown of all the myriad of conditions that I had uh, that, uh, and that way you can get a grasp of why I had these suicidal thoughts going on in my head. At my peak, I was just under 650 pounds just a couple years ago. So uh, if you want to see what that looks like, that was me. That was me just about two and a half years ago. Uh, uh, it was estimated somewhere in the range of 638 pounds. Uh, this was at the height of my severe alcoholism. Um, I never had an addiction to food, per se. It was alcohol. And I became depressed very young uh, because of my overweightness. And I, I got to a point where I just didn't want to give up. You know, uh, you could just ask my family on how many gallons of rock gut vodka I used to go through a week, and they'd probably tell you wasn't pretty and I'm sure they expected me to die. In fact, I myself uh, was expecting and actually I was actually looking forward to it like a long lost friend. So uh, uh, I had high blood, high blood pressure, cholesterol, type 2 diabetes obviously, chronic joint and back pain, uh, metab metabolic syndrome, hypothyroidism, hypogonadism, chronic obstructive pulmonary disease, uh, sleep apnea, severe osteoarthritis, other orthopedic problems, uh, severe neuropathic pain, which is numbness in my feet and extremities, uh, mobility impairment, obviously I was bedridden at a point, hernias, gallstones, shortness of breath that was incapacitating to me sometimes, uh, decreased fertility, skin disorders uh, because of bacterial breakdown because of how big I was, not to mention all the emotional and uh, the social problems that arise from being that size as well. Um, recent studies have concluded that obesity increases the risk for coronary disease, increased unexplained heart attacks, uh, hyperlipidemia, infertility, high prevalence of colon, uh, prostate, endometrial, and even possibly breast cancers now. Um, approximately 300,000 people die every year from super uh, or obesity and, and those even bigger. Uh, prompting leaders in public health, including the Surgeon General uh, C. Everett Koop, to uh, declare that obesity is the second leading cause of death in America now. Um, it's, it's not only an epidemic, uh, in my estimation, I think it's a pandemic, because when you start to get to a point where you've got 20 million plus obese and se severely overweight people in China, uh, you would think that, that it's a lost cause, but I'm here to tell you it's not because you're staring and looking at a person that's been able to do it by himself with very little help, just with enough research that I, would, I did on my own. Um, and so I think the battle is not lost. I mean, I'm here to tell you that it's not. So in 2007, I came to that research conclusion that my nerve damage and my pain were causing me uh, both, not only it was being caused by diabetes, but also by my severe alcoholism. I was there with a three-week bout of insomnia that I had that I made the decision that if I was ever going to get myself well, that I was going to have to start with stopping the drink. So after three and a half weeks, I literally just one day said, this is it, this is it with booze, cut it. Went cold turkey. That was the first step in my health recovery. Uh, but the problem was I still smoked, so I started compensating with my other addiction.
addiction to smoking, and I end up starting smoking twice as much. And that kind of started my real decline into the help and, and, and started to know Sky. Um, you know, it increased, uh, it's, it's when I looked into uh, natural supplementation is, uh, the other thing I found out was that uh, through my severe alcoholism, that this neuropathic pain, the numbness was due kidding. And I, that's when I started looking into ways that I, I could uh, naturally supplement uh, the neuro neuropathy and the diabetes. And that's when I concluded that I came up with a, a Chinese herb called fenugreek and cinnamon. And I started using the combination of fenugreek and cinnamon to treat my diabetes, and it was working. Um, it didn't yet help with the neuropathic pains, which ended up giving me, obviously, uh, decreased mobility problems. And I ended up uh, starting to fall down. Now, at my size, at that size, it takes more than just a couple people to help me up. So, literally, we'd have to call emergency personnel. They'd have to get five, six able-bodied people to come and get me up. This was a regular occurrence until about 2009 when I fell down and I hurt my knee. Um, when I hurt my knee, I realized I was going to have to go to the hospital. And so, with the encouragement of my family, uh, they sent me, or I admitted myself to uh, the hospital. And that's where I started, you know, as Oprah says, I had that aha moment that in the hospital that I didn't really want to die. I had a lot to live for. I just didn't know how I was going to get there at this point. Um, we had talked about weight loss surgery with my doctor when we were in there, but at my severe size, I knew I couldn't do that. He said I'd have to do it naturally uh, with nutrition and exercise to get to a point to where I could have that. And I just looked at him and I said, you know, uh, if I'm going to have to get lose 200 and so pounds doing it naturally, I might as well not stop there and I just keep going. So I went to rehab. Uh, and at the Bryan Center, uh, I started my physical rehabilitation. So it was really my first foray into learning weight exercises and started to use weights, used ankle weights. I mean, I literally started, I mean, in a wheelchair, standing, sitting, standing, sitting, putting ankle weights on and slowly building up my muscles. I started walking with a, a walker, 25 feet, then 50, 100, down the hall. It was a progressive thing. They looked at me like I was a dead man when I got there, or that I would never leave. Um, and they were looking at a long-term care. They in, 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 in inserted me into long-term care. I'm sure they thought I was going to be there for years. And uh, I was just under three months, and I was out. Um, I built my muscles up very quickly. I got to the point where I could get out. But I still came home on oxygen, 24 hours of oxygen, because of my lung problems. And in that wheelchair, uh, but then I really delved into the nutrition and the exercise part. Uh, that's the great thing about the internet. It's loaded with information, but it's also so many diversified information that a lot of people get kind of lost in all the information. So it took me a long time to kind of delve through it, and uh, I started my own plan. But the, the, the biggest thing was that I understood right off the bat that I needed to use whole real foods. So immediately everything like sodas and even diet sodas and all that was gone. Uh, I started using real whole nutrient dense foods, uh, lots of water, and physical uh, physical exertion actually. Um, you know, I started to uh, quit the smoking in the hospital, um, and uh, I knew that I had to move. So. Being a musician, I uh, literally was still like, kind of trapped in my recliner, but I, I, I set up a music station on Pandora and I started working out music and I literally took those ankle weights and dumbbells and I started dancing in my recliner. Mm -hmm. And uh, so uh, we started to have this whole plan and you know, in my mind I thought it was going to be like a six, seven year plan to lose all this weight. I had such, such a tremendous amount of weight to lose. And uh, so my sister and I both, she's been my rock for this whole thing. Uh, about the first of the year of 2010, this was in 2009, I got home in about September of 2010, she bought me a book. She had seen a program on PBS by Dr. Amen called Change Your Brain, Change Your Body. Um, she thought this was a great program. Uh, it sounded like a great book. She gave it to me, and when I read it, it was like life transformational because what he talked about was nourishing your brain, starting with your brain, no matter if you've got depression, anxiety, obesity, uh, stress, whatever it is, giving your body and your brain, especially the right nutrients, 
going to help you get through all those points where you want to give up. Gave me willpower, gave me uh, energy, obviously. Um, and so uh, we decided uh, every four months we were going to do a weigh-in. So we're on our way to the weigh-in uh, the first time in four and a half months, and I was convinced that I lost 50 pounds. And uh, my sister told me not to get my hopes up just in case I would, so, you know, in case I didn't and I would implode or like that. But uh, we got there and I went to stand on, before I stand on the scale, I said a little prayer and sorry, this how it happens. Uh, <laughs> then I looked down and it was 156 pounds gone. And when that happened, my life changed forever because I realized uh, at that point, not only did I only save my life, that I knew other people that were that my same size could do this themselves. All they needed was the right information. So it didn't take about a week. I got on Facebook. I have to say Facebook was a big part of my success as well. And I started a group called Steve's Massive Weight Loss Fan Page. And uh, I started taking all that information that I learned and started putting it out on, on this group page. So I put tips, hints, articles, videos, Anything that I thought could help other people, uh, I started posting. Um, at first, it was just uh, friends and family, people from high school, and uh, but I kept I kept going. So when I got by, I got to the point in my physical rehab that by the summer of 2010, I could buy myself my own recumbent exercise bike. Uh, by this time, I had been marching in place behind a walker. Uh, I've done a little damage to my knee, but that's why I got the recumbent. And so this was uh, Lance Armstrong's last year on the Tour de France. So I literally would turn on the TV and watch him pedal, and I'd get on that bike. Started with a mile. Uh, pretty soon it was three, then it was five, seven. By the end of that summer, I was doing 15 miles. By the time Lance had finished his tour, I was doing 15 miles in one session in about an hour and a half. Um, so then I, I started building up a little bit of following, and so at the end of that summer, I started posting on local news uh, Facebook pages, telling them what I was doing. At this point, I had lost 230 pounds in just this entire calendar year. And lo and behold, it didn't take more than about three, three and a half weeks that NBC in Charlotte, North Carolina, where I was living, picked my story up, and they came and did it. And they posted it on the day that they premiered The Biggest Loser that season. And uh, they ran it, and by 9 o'clock that morning, CNN had picked it up. And when CNN picked it up and they started disseminating it, it went everywhere, and my weight fan page just exploded. I got uh, 600 plus emails from all across this country and the world, as far as I've got a follower all the way from Kathmandu, Nepal. She's been following me now for almost my entire journey. She's also a health professional, a trainer, uh, promoting health. And uh, I got inspirational stories, and I got horror stories as well. Um, I thought I was in bad condition, and then I realized that this country and in, in this world, we're in a bad state of affairs when it comes to uh, overweightness. And uh, I realized that nutrition itself plays such a huge, important part in our, in our health. Uh, as well as the exercise, and uh, I knew that organics, somehow I got to the point in my research that I found out there are just some things that you need to eat clean, uh, green, and lean, and uh, so I focused on a lot of organics through my journey. Uh, I dabbled in all kinds of different integrative approaches, so it was never, I never stuck to one thing. I did do a lot of raw in the beginning, six to eight months, I focused on a lot of raw stuff. This helped me to lose a lot of weight. I'm telling you, the water makes a, a significant uh, addition to that. The more you can drink, I mean, I literally was drinking gallons at one point, but it really helped. Um, and I've gotten lost now, so. <laughs> um, but anyway, after the, I lost that first uh, 156 pounds, um, everything was gone. My diabetes was gone, my hypertension was gone, and my doctor even told me, he said, well, I want you to stay on the statin drug. And I said, well, no, I'm not going to do that anymore. I was shedding, I was on a, I, at one point I was on 10 pills. And I started shedding one after another, and I, tell, I, said, I told the doc, I said, I'll tell you what, I'm going to quit the statin drug, I'll come back in three months, and uh, we'll take my readings, and we'll see what they are, and if they've gone skyrocket, I'll go right back on them. We came back three months later, and I had the best cholesterol readings I'd had ever had in 20 years. So he's like, just keep doing what you're doing, I'm out. 
And so uh, it, it, it built from there. And uh, I got to a point uh, at that end, uh, actually the, uh, in the spring uh, before that, I, I had met Dr. Oz. Me and my sister went to go see him in Mooresville, and he told me to keep doing what I was doing and encouraged me to keep on this path. And so uh, by the end of uh, 2010, I had, well, I see it was close to almost 300 pounds gone. But at the same time, I started another page on Facebook to try to get uh, myself on Oprah, because I knew it was Oprah's last season, and I said, surely she's got to have a weight loss finale, and i got to be on that. So. Instead of self-promoting myself, I asked my followers and everybody that was following me to start writing letters to her. But we hit 2011, and I knew her season was coming to the end, and I didn't hear anything, so I thought it was it. And um, then lo and behold, at, at the beginning of March, I got an email from my cousin saying, you need to check your emails, and it was a producer from Oprah. Uh, they said, we want to encourage you to invite you to be part of 100 people on our weight loss finale of people that have lost 100 pounds or more. It was asked at the same time that I came in contact with Z Zarbach, who's one of our producers for Big Dreams. Um, she, had, she told me that she had an idea for a TV show, a reality docu-based kind of uh, weight loss, health, healthy lifestyle show that she was interested in uh, talking to me about. And I told, uh, told him that I was on my way to go to Chicago, and she asked me to stop in Boston on the way. So uh, that's how our collaboration started. Um, I did go to Oprah. I did stop here first. We started our talks about the, the show, kind of like putting it in, uh, in perspective of what maybe what we wanted to do. I went to Oprah. That happened to be the same day that we recorded that Obama was there. So everything went for fluey. I wanted to talk to producers about our little promo and everything, but him being there, everything was changed. And so after that whole thing happened, she said, why don't you come back to Boston on your way back and we'll do a little more collaboration, which is how we met uh, Kristen over here at Lucas as well. So we came back, we went to her house, and we just started our conceptualization of our show. Um, and. You know, I stand, I stand before you today a completely changed man, and uh, outside, but more importantly, inside too, because uh, I think it's the mind, it's the brain where the whole thing begins. You know, whether it's addiction, whether it's any kind of problems, stress, anxiety, it all begins with your brain. And, uh, you know, if we start thinking how this food will damage our brain and our bodies before we put it into it, and if we started thinking like that, we start making more mindful decisions and yeah. in, 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 in what we decide to eat. You know, we vote with our forks every single day. And, and if you just start ask, if, asking yourself, is this good for you or is it bad for you, um, I think we can make a big difference. Um, whether we stay well or we walk down the path of disease is entirely in our own hands, you know. And it's not in the hands of your health advisor, which I like to call them doctors, or even your trainers. Okay? They can't control what you put in your mind. They can't make you do the work. Okay? You are in control. You have the power to change and get well. And it's the quality of our well-being directly relates to the quality of the fuel or the food that we put into it. Um, you know, it doesn't have to continue us as so much. In, it's, it's easy. I mean, it, if you want to break it down to the most simple promise or a simple plan, it's in with good, out with bad. And if you can do that, and this includes foods, thoughts, habits, mind, body, spirit, carbs, fats, and proteins. And it seems this repeated pattern of threes keep following in this thing, but it really, if you don't put your health on the back burner anymore, and do it first for yourself and your family, and then you spread that love forward to others, and they will tell their friend, family and friends, and they will do it. And that, is, that ripple effect is how we can get control of obesity in this country and the world. So uh, you may wonder uh, how I became involved with Eric and Lori and Anytime Fitness here. And part of my journey to health recovery also in, involves social media and Facebook. Uh, in fact, Zuck Zuckerberg is probably one of the people I have on my must-to-meet list. Mm -hmm. I'd like to meet him someday just to tell him how important Facebook has played in my recovery. Uh, I think he would really get a kick of how his social media is actually changing people and, and changing lives. 
Um, so after I started my weight clause and I got all that uh, following, uh, I decided that I was going to move here to, uh, to Worcester. And we're going to make this, this was kind of be our little base for big drinks. And uh, we met uh, Eric and Lori here for many times. And uh, they got me uh, into a program. I mean, I knew I had to kick my exercise level to the next, take it to the next level. And uh, they helped me in that success as well. Um, you know, I started this on my own. I mean, you have to remember that I actually did this no surgery. There's no trainers from the beginning. No motivation except to live and have that chance to pay forward to others and inspire them to take control for themselves too. You know, by the time 2011 rolled around, uh, I knew I was well on my way and I actually were having people on my way uh, book uh, page that were following and they were having uh, success too. And, uh, you know, it's, I immediately decided that, uh, that I want to make this my passion. This obviously you can hear it's my passion, but I, this is something I, I feel that I, anybody can do if they put it all in perspective. You know, I started talking in, in the beginning saying deep and uh, I'm talking about a deep soul searching talk. But it's also the method that I've coined now for how I've worked a program with an integrated many different methodologies uh, to create the success I've had. Deep, D-E-E-P. That's determination, education, experimentation, and perspiration. And uh, determination, that's exactly what you need to stick to a new motivational, a uh, new, new nutritional life plan. To stay focused and driven to succeed in your journey to better health. Believe it or not, proper nutrition will help you do this. And eating things like dark greens, proteins, good carbs, and, and, and that kind of stuff will give you the energy required to stay active. Uh, the number one reason people don't go to the gym is because they say they're too tired. Well, I'm telling you, it's most of the time it's what they eat that's making them tired. So they don't want to go to the gym. Um, education. Uh, I know there's so much information out there, like I just said before, that most people become lost and confused very quickly when they start sifting through all that stuff on the internet. And that's why it took me hundreds of hours to kind of get through it and, then, and try these tried and true methods and find the ones that really work. Because when you actually read through enough plans, you realize there's an overriding theme that goes along in this, and that's nutrition. Um, you know, all these different plans that I've tried, raw, vegan, paleo, Ayurveda, uh, that all includes real foods and uh, nutrients. And uh, uh, don't forget that plenty of good old H2O too. Uh, experimentation, you know, throughout my journey, I've uh, dabbled in many different ways of applying these methods and experimenting on what works. Uh, I think that's why diets don't work, you know, because, uh, and they fail us miserably. And in fact, and it's a billion dollar industry that we have in this country and, and it really doesn't work. You know, that's because not one method works for everybody. Right. You know, one method's gonna work for one person yeah. and another one's gonna work for another one. So it's that trying those experimentations that uh, you're going to find out. You know, I started with raw foods, like I said, you know. And the reason I did that is because it had the max nutrients. The more you cook your food, the less nutrients you, you're losing. And I, I learned, listen, we are, we are living things, okay? Uh, we were required to eat living things for us to survive and be optimally healthy. Uh, we're born onto this earth. We need the things like plants and the food that is on this earth to survive. Uh, we don't need prepackaged, jarred, bagged crap. Um, and uh, let's get back to that last term, and it's exactly why we're here all today, uh, to stay healthy and active, and that's perspiration. You know, changing our lifestyles, including eating more fiber, weighing less, drinking less, smoking less, uh, controlling our blood pressure, cholesterol, are all things that we should take seriously. But uh, there really is only one thing that has the most impact on our complete health overall. And I told you that I had knee arthritis. Uh, this is one of the, uh, this is the one therapy when applied one hour, three times a week, has the effect of reducing our arthritis by 47%. This one therapy in older people, it has a clear impact on dementia and Alzheimer's and reducing it by 50%. People with high risk of diabetes and other lifestyle related disease can help, help can be helped and reduced by almost 58%. This therapy in postmenopausal women has a 41% reduction 
in the risk of hip fractures. Uh, it reduces stress and anxiety in one study done by 48%. In depression, it reduces it in low dose therapies by 30%. If you up the dose of this therapy, you cure or, or reduce uh, depression by up to 48%. Uh, in a Harvard study done on 10,000 alumni at Harvard, they applied this therapy to their people and it showed that it had applied, reduced the risk of death by nearly 27% in 10,000 people. Not to mention that it is the number one treatment for fatigue across the board. Um, and to me, the number one absolute best result of this therapy that I'm talking about, which is the exact thing that I have personally experienced, is that it increases your quality of life exponentially. I mean, I was in a bed just three years ago, and you see where I am now. Um, it has a profound and transformational way, and you cannot put a price tag on that. You just, you just can't. So, you probably want to know what this magical therapy is, and uh, and where you can get it. Right, while well, you're standing in it right now, you're standing in the gym, and that is uh, it's exercise. And if you just think back to that coin term I was talking about, it's it's a deep determination, education, experimentation, perspiration. You know. If we just learn to move a little more, we're going to get and stay more healthy. And, uh, and it doesn't have to be strenuous exercise either. You know, you can be walking on the treadmill, you can be on our bike, you can be doing these heart-raising things that we have right into this gym right now and get yourself better. It just takes 30 minutes to one hour three times a week. And I'm talking about 90 minutes to 180 minutes a week. And you will have an incredible impact on your overall well-being. Uh, you couple that with nutrition, elevated water consumption, and natural supplementation, and you've got yourself a recipe for better, longer, and a less strong, uh, stressful life. Uh, I just want to end here with a couple of quotes by Hippocrates, the father of modern medicine. And you have to realize that he lived back at a time where disease was nowhere close to what we have in this country and this world now. And uh, his, his first quote is about nutrition. And he said, uh, let thy food be thy medicine medicine be thy food. I truly believe that. Uh, it's helped me save my own life, and I hope to save others by doing it. Uh, the other quote is about exercise, and he said, I believe that walking is man's best medicine. And this is a man that's lived thousands of years ago. This guy was a guru, he was a mentor, mm -hmm. and uh, I wish we'd be applying his methods a little more uh, on a regular basis uh, now. I wish to thank you all for coming out today and listening. Uh, Z and Kristen are here. If you have any questions about our project and the show, please thank Eric and Lori and Lewis here, and they can answer any of your questions about this wonderful gym. Um, I just want to tell you that health is not a state of mind. It's a state of being. Uh, I wish you all to be well, and uh, peace and love plus health equal harmony. God bless you.